Hey guys, <clears throat> so I'm back. I'm feeling a lot better. I'm not gonna say it I'm 100%, but I'm like 80, 85. <laughs> so that's still pretty good. I had been getting warnings to rest, and I, you know, Taurus moon shit. I thought I was resting enough, but apparently not. <laughs> When my guys tell me to rest and I don't, I feel like I'm resting enough, they'll like, look, we're going to have to knock you out to get you to rest the amount of time we need you to rest. <laughs> so I'm rested. <laughs> I'm feeling a lot better. Thank you for all the wonderful well wishes. Happy New Year's, by the way, to everyone. <sighs> I appreciate the kind thoughts, the prayers, the wishes. You guys are the best, truly. And I, I love you all so much. Um, just a reminder that there are still scammers out there. Give me one second. We're going to ring the bell, okay? There are still scammers out there. Um, but at this point, I'm just going to let them stay because they really push my comments, <laughs> my algorithm. They're commenting all over the place. I'm like, they're useful. I'll, I'll let them. I'll allow it. <laughs> So I hope you guys don't fall for that. It just takes so much time to be removing each and every comment. I just, I'm going to let it go. Um, and hopefully by now you understand that if somebody's asking you to send them a firm request or message them or start giving you a cold reading, that that's not a genuine reader. And I just don't know how else to spill it out to you guys. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm actually going to be two, two of these today, which you'll see. It, it just evens out because one of the days I didn't do one. So let's see. What is the collective message for today? Collective message for today. <clears throat> oh, we already had this one. That's interesting that it's coming up again. This is the... Um, well, let's read it. <clears throat> okay, 43... This one is Myeonggyo, Object of Ridicule, <clears throat> Early Joseon Period. Park Sang, a member of the Joseon envoys, envoys I, don't know, I can't talk, who were dispatched to Ming four times a year, was lecherous despite his ugly appearance. He often played with different women every time at every corner where the envoys stayed. The group, who had been pathetic about Park, or who thought him pathetic, basically, planned together and picked out a young and beautiful man among the Confucian scholars. <clears throat> his name was Myeonggyo. And the envoys dressed up Myeonggyo and sat him alongside the Kisangs. When Park Sang saw Myeonggyo, he fell in love with Myeonggyo's beauty and was anxious to win his heart, even leaving behind the other Kisang he loved at the time. That night, Park Sang was shocked to find out that Myeonggyo was a man only after they entered the room and lay down together. The group of envoys had to leave the village the next day, and Myeonggyo, who was in his original Confucian scholar costume, teased Park Sang, who tried to climb the horse, saying, How can you leave me easily after having fun all night while pulling the sleeve of Park? So, basically how it applies is a man who tries to harass a woman using his position became an object of ridicule in front of everyone. The confidence that thinks he himself will be popular with all women without knowing his ugly appearance is even uglier. Even the same gender, even the same male gender was trying to join in and humiliate him. So, could also indicate everyone is performing a play to tease this insignificant person. In historical records, there were also quite a few men as beautiful as women, which that's happening today too. Beauty is the greatest interest for everyone regardless of era. Hmm. Okay, well, <clears throat> let's see what that has to do with today's collective. <laughs> Last time we extracted a specific message, but let's see what message we get today. What do we need to know about this situation, about this message? We've got playfulness. To recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. What else do we need to know about this collective message? Unrequited love. <clears throat> There's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going. Oof. Okay. Calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations help bring you together. What else? 
okay? We've got religious factors. Your love life is influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path. <clears throat> Pay attention to the red flags. The signs are cautioning you. Worth waiting for. Divine timing is at work in your love life. True love. This is the romance of a lifetime. Give your relationship a chance. Work on your partnership. And keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. Oh, interesting. Past life relationship, you have known each other before. Forgiving and learning. As you release and heal the past, you experience more love in your present moments. Let go of control issues. Allow the situation to unfold naturally. Ooh, with wedding. <clears throat> well, well, well. Ouch, that ash burn. <laughs> Hold on. Oof, I was trying to figure out how to set the incense and all I got was burned for my trouble. Give me a second. Let me put the incense over here. <clears throat> okay. All right. <sighs> so this is di very different than what, well, not very different, but it's like, another perspective to a situation like this. I have a feeling that this collective message we're going to be unraveling has a lot to do with someone who <sighs> this is so cruel, but I have to say it. Um, Almost like somebody approached another person with a spirit of mischief. With the spirit of, let's see if this person falls for it. But it was unrequited. <clears throat> they weren't truly attracted to this person. However, the person that they approached was calling in their soulmate. They were using prayers, affirmations, visualizations. They may have different spiritual beliefs. And whoever approached them was definitely giving off red flags that let them know this is, look, you can see there's like a, a spirit here talking to her. Somebody's spirit guides was, was cautioning them like, ah, ah, listen to this. <clears throat> this person is, it's like they are a soulmate, but they came in very, um, immature they came in they came in with the intention to ridicule this other person maybe they're very attractive because remember beauty right they're very attractive and they felt like this person was not and they wanted to play with them i know that sounds really cruel and horrible but <clears throat> What's interesting here is that I do believe they are a, a soulmate. Divine timing is at work. And it's worth waiting for because I feel like somebody's transforming. It's a past life relationship, which means that when they approached this person, because I don't know who it is yet, we haven't really seen people, because we haven't pulled the tarot yet. This is a past life relationship. These two have been together in a previous life. In a previous life, they had a really passionate, intense connection. But the reason, look, see, soulmate. The reason, and I didn't even see that one when I was going to the bottom of the deck. The reason that they were supposed to come together at that time is because neither one of them were ready they were meant to be kind of teaching each other lessons. They're meant to grow together. They have a lot of forgiving and learning to do from each other. But look, this is their soulmate. So maybe either one of, the, both of them had to let go of control issues, let go of religious perceptions, let go of toxic patterns or, or behaviors 
and the situation kind of started unfolding. It's making me think of a, of a flower that was blossoming when it's supposed to. Look, this situation involves marriage. I think <clears throat> for those who resonate with this, whenever you're watching this, this will lead to marriage. If you're watching this a year from now, so I'm posting it, you know, what day is today? <laughs> like it's January 2nd, I believe, or 3rd of um, 2024. Even if you watch this a year or two years from now, if this is the message you're drawn to right now, this is what you're going through. <clears throat> the person that has behaved this way, I'm not saying that you should give unforgiving, like, uh, not unforgiving, um, unconditional love and let them act however they want. No, 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 no. Because it is. Pay attention to a red flag. So, for example, let's say that this is somebody who is an asshole, right? A jerk. They approach <clears throat> somebody with the intent of ridiculing them. But then when they start getting to know them, they realize this is the romance of a lifetime. This is the person that they also have been waiting for. But now they have to work through a lot of the beliefs they had about love. If the person that they approached, masculine or feminine, doesn't matter. Maybe they weren't the ideal type in beauty. And that's what they were after. They weren't the ideal type or the ideal gender. Because this is a story of two men. It could have been that it was two men or two women. Either way, divine timing was at work. It knew that the souls would recognize each other. They have to work on it. They both have to be willing to work on it. So if, if one person approaches the other and they're still in a very superficial mindset, the other person has to pay attention to red flags and say, no. One person is learning boundaries. <clears throat> the other person is learning depth. Could be one person is learning how to be playful, <clears throat> how to be youthful, how to be fun. And the other person is learning how to be more serious, how to be more... Um, how to plan for their future. Both of them have to keep an open mind. Because it means that the person that's actually for them is not who they thought they thought it would be. How interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Kind of like um there's an old, old movie back in the nineties <clears throat> with Freddie Prince Jr. and uh I forgot the girl's name, but it's called She's All That. And this was a similar theme, right? He approached her out of a bet. And then it turned out that's the person he fell in love with. But this is like divine timing knew what it was doing. It had a very... This this is a love story. It has a very unusual beginning. And I'm not saying that every person that does this type of thing is your soulmate. You'll know because if this story resonates with you, this person is changing. They are improving. You don't need to tell me they're improving. or I mean, you can if you want to. But you'll know they're improving because they are changing. Every time you say, no, I'm not going to tolerate this type of behavior and you push them away. You can see that they're growing. You can see that they are improving. They're becoming a better version of themselves. Because if they're not changing, that tells you that's just that's just not the person for you. This is the story of people who are growing. Clarify past life relationship. Queen of Wands, Ten of Swords. Hmm. Clarify past life relationship. Prince of Chalices, which is the Page of Cups, and the Three of Wands. The Eight of Wands. Ten of Cups, Six of Cups. I have a feeling that this is a masculine approaching a feminine energy. And again, I'm not talking about genders. I'm talking about energies. In a past life. Although this connection might have been very passionate, might have been very intense. I believe the Queen of Wands had to lay someone to rest had to say goodbye. They passed away before she did. But she never let the love for them die. She would always wish to maybe spend her next lifetime with them, <clears throat> to see them again. And maybe her wish, or maybe they both made a promise 
four of wands because usually that's what happens both people make a promise before they passed away they might have made a promise i'll see you in the next lifetime in the next lifetime we will find each other and we will love each other again but not only that it was meant to like help each other grow so this is this is like um and this one the the hawk if it's a hawk is it a hawk yeah the hawk is making me think of message messages from divinity the masculine chose to approach this feminine because there was something there there was something like um it was like a divine download, right? Because divine timing is at work. They didn't even know why. They felt like, you know what? I feel like pursuing this one, but let's make it a game. Let's make it... Like they wanted to indulge. They wanted her to fall in love with them, but they, they weren't really planning on reciprocating. Clarify playfulness. Oh, there's another one also... Um, I think there, there's probably several movies like this because I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of the ways Divinity uses to straighten people's connections out. <laughs> um, there's another one called Cruel Intentions, I think, where it's, it's similar. Clarify Playfulness. Five of Wands. Clarify Playfulness. Nine of Swords, Five of Cups. strength card oh interesting so we're clarifying the playfulness recapture romance allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine this masculine might have heard that this feminine was a challenge and they're like accepted challenge accepted this is somebody who's very very good looking remember this is um they chose someone that was very beautiful right so the masculine is very good looking or the feminine, whoever's approaching the other, <clears throat> whoever was thinking of having cruel intentions, they were like challenge accepted because they might have needed to distract themselves from something else. So it was almost, I, I'm not making excuses for them. But we are clarifying playfulness. It was almost like done in a way of like, I need a distraction. And what better way than to, than to domesticate this wild creature? Even if it wasn't so much, look, here it's a bull. Even if it's not something that they're attracted to, it was, it was the challenge. It was the principle of the thing. Like, I just want to be the one that can show my strength, show my bravado, my, you know, how I can master this wild creature. But I think that they had, this This might be somebody who, remember I said there's toxic energies here that need to be worked through. Whether it's the masculine or feminine approaching the other person, they have a tendency when they're not feeling their best, when they've just suffered some disappointment, when they're going through a lot of anxiety, it's almost like they take it out on other people. Um, they're a little sadistic. That's their, that's their toxic trait. One, I should say one of, at least one of the toxic traits that we can see. So they were going through some stuff. They were going through some, something that put them through a lot of worries, something that really made them sad. And they're like, you know what? I need a distraction. And they volunteered. They signed up. Clarify unrequited love. Empress. Knight of Pentacles. Ooh, Four of Wands reversed. The Ten of Wands. Yeah, so there was hidden intentions here. <sighs> they wanted to to be the person that this feminine or masculine, whoever it is they're approaching, 
they want to be the one that got away. They want to be the, the burden that this person carries because they can't get over this masculine or feminine. Now, what they did not realize <laughs> is they're dealing with an empress. So an empress is shown very attractive, not because she has to have this type of figure or this type of age, this type of look. An empress is attractive because she has mastered all four queens. So she is a beautiful blend of feminine, masculine energy, of soft versus firm, compassion with strength. She's, she's got a lot of really intricate, intricate, I can't talk today, <laughs> intricate complexities within who she is as a person. But remember, they were focused on the outside. So when they approached her, they're like, eh, this person isn't attractive enough. Almost like they felt like, I guess, let's see. Let's see what happens. At least it'll get my mind off this bullshit. And here they come. Acting very, um, first of all, acting a lot more immature than an empress. But also maybe trying to impress the empress with how much they had. with no intention of it going further. Now, what they don't realize is the Empress has been calling in her soulmate. And guess who her soulmate is? Calling in her soulmate. Let's see. Ace of Pentacles. Knight of Swords. And the Hanged Man. <laughs> look, look at this, it's so funny. Look, both images have someone with their arms extended upward, both feminine pictures, with an angel protecting the, the prayer, protecting the, the plea, sending that energy out, calling in their soulmate. <laughs> oh, right when I looked up at the camera, I was 22, 22. So, yeah, that's, that's what they didn't... They didn't realize that somebody here had been visualizing affirming and praying for the person that that should be with them to come in now ace of pentacles what this empress wants is something long term something stable something that should be should turn into something solid right and as they start realizing this they're like oh i know I can just, you know, act like that's what I want. So they start increasing their efforts because they start off really slow and they start increasing their efforts. Like, oh, I got this. Almost like they felt, oh, this is going to be an easy win. And before you know it, they're caught. They're caught and they don't even know why. But that's because they are the soulmate. They, they are the Ace of Pentacles. Now, for those of you wondering... Why didn't they, why didn't the universe bring to the Empress someone who was already ready, somebody who was already developed, someone that she didn't have to deal with? That tells us the Empress wasn't fully ready herself. That's what it tells us. And it's not, that's not a flaw in her character. That's not that there's something wrong with her. It's that, let's say she had barely learned to step into boundaries. The universe is going to allow the right person that is for her but who isn't ready who doesn't know how to respect boundaries into her life to test if she is really working on her boundaries is she really working on her self-love is she really working on her sense of value on her priorities what is she prioritizing love or is she prioritizing her growth and her path because if this is the right person for her and she prioritizes her growth and her path her steadfastness will influence this other person to start healing themselves if they are truly her to inflame her soulmate. Clarify religious factors. Knight of Cups. <laughs> Clarify religious factors. Four of Swords. Two of Swords. <laughs> With the Page of Pentacles, King of Cups, 
the Hierophant. Okay, <clears throat> so you will resonate with this story if, as the Empress, you know that you invested time into this person, but not a lot. Page of Pentacles, it's a little bit. It was an investment, but it was like an investment because they know that this masculine has the capacity to love, but they're not there yet. They have the capacity for loyalty, for long-term connection. But right now, they're not ready. And right now, they have a lot of clashes right now because they come from very different religious, spiritual backgrounds. However, they can tell that this masculine is forming feelings. Now, they're not... They are not king-level feelings, but they are knight-level feelings. But the feelings are there. Those feelings started inspiring this masculine to heal. Almost like it put them on pause. And we see that here as well. <clears throat> they were put on pause. They started seeing things like, wait, why do I play these type of games with people? Because I'm sure they had it out. At some point, remember, they're dealing with an empress. She's not stupid. At some point, the empress realized what they're doing. And they had it out. But it was, remember, this is two of swords. It's a Libra moon energy. The empress debated with them. And they could feel, this is my match. Because she debates with them not from a place of emotion. From a place of clarity. From a place of logic. From a place of... <sighs> pragmatism, being practical, being very direct, but knowing that they're right. And it made this person stop and think, why do I do this bullshit? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I act this way. And the more they started discussing things with this empress, they start realizing, I need to address this, don't I? There is something within me that needs to be addressed for me to do things like this, for me to play with people like this. At the same time, look, all these butterflies, the transformation has begun. But at the same time, they started falling in love. Oh, I'm hearing a song of, uh, how does it go? Could it be I'm falling in love? Hold on. Let me get the... Who sings that? <clears throat> the spinners. <laughs> it says, since I met you, I've begun to feel so strange every time I speak your name. That's funny. You say that you are so helpless too that you don't know what to do. Each night, I pray there will never come a day when you up and take your love away. Say you feel the same way too, and I wonder what it is I feel for you. Could it be I'm falling in love with you, baby? I don't need all those things that used to bring me joy. You've made me such a happy boy. And honey, you'll always be the only one for me. Meeting you is my destiny. You can be sure I will never let you down. When you need me, I'll be around. And darling, you'll always be the only one for me. Heaven made you specially. Could it be I'm falling in love with you, baby? Uh, and then it says, uh, darling, you'll always be the only one for me. I walk around with my heart in my hands. Hey, I walk the street as long as I can, baby. I used to sing fa, 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 fa. <laughs> but right now I feel so good. I sing la, 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 la. <laughs> Once you get me up, won't let me down. Just let this feeling carry me on. Skip the beats with my heart, girl. Yeah. <clears throat> like I said, they, felt, they started falling in love. But just because the feelings might be mutual... Well, the thing is, I don't know that she's falling in love. I feel like she's attracted to this person, but this is an empress. I don't see a feminine response in love. It might have started off with a crush with the page of cups, but this person is a knight of cups. But 
the empress is paying attention to the red flags like mm, no i don't know about that so they invest time and energy into this person but not like they care about them as a person but in their mind this isn't the right one because what they were manifesting was long-term stability was someone who was loyal devoted not this person clarify pay attention to red flags queen of cups Ooh, seven of pentacles reversed king of swords upright mm-hmm With the full card, the world and the magician. Yeah. Okay. So at some level, the Empress did did love this person. I, I'm not sure if I would say in love, but the Queen of Cups usually is in love to me. So let's say the Empress did fall in love with this person. That doesn't mean they were going to invest in this person. Seven of Pentacles is reversed. They're like, yeah, no. This person has too many red flags. <clears throat> They're too calculating. They're cruel. I may love this person, but I also know that they're not the one for me. And it's interesting because something about this connection helped her realize things about herself. Things she needed to work on. But they see this person like they just want to roll Go with the breeze. Like, they're not ready to settle down. They're not ready to be stable. They're not... That's why I'm not investing in them, because they will not invest in anything else. Hmm. Okay. Clarify worth waiting for. Ace of Wands. Eight of Wands. We're not getting all those. We're just getting this one. Four of Cups, yeah. The King of Wands. Okay, okay. So this tells us that the masculine is definitely changing. And before y'all get excited and start thinking that every masculine that you've dealt with, this fits. You'll know if this fits because the masculine in this story is no longer a player. So if before they used to be a knight of wands, they've tempered that. They are still a very passionate person. But it's almost like something in them recognized Remember, we got the Queen of Wands over here, right? Something in them recognized the Queen of Wands. Something in them recognized their soulmate. And it started tempering who they used to be. The attraction for this queen just keeps growing. And they feel like this is worth investing in. If before... <clears throat> I have a feeling this masculine would do cruel things because it was, you know, connected to red flags and caution. But it doesn't matter what this masculine would do. They keep thinking, no, I have to keep investing in this because their attraction just keeps getting stronger and stronger for this queen. So they might send messages to each other, but I don't think the feminine is interested in them at this point. She may have feelings, but she she feels like, no, this is not, this is not the connection I need to invest in. While they are sitting here feeling like that was a missed opportunity. I had, I had my queen right in front of me and I, I fucked it up. Hold on. <clears throat> I told you, I'm almost at 100%, but not fully. Anyways, let's see. Clarify true love. Justice. Four of Pentacles. And Temperance. <laughs> Look, the tower. <clears throat> well tell you one thing the masculine never expected to fall in love the tower they're sitting here in shock like what the fuck just happened 
This used to be somebody who just went where the wind blew them. And now they have a purpose. Their purpose is to make sure that this connection doesn't escape them. Yep, five of swords. They're, they're ready to fight anybody or anything that gets in their way of getting with their empress. Their perception of beauty changed because they realized that they're in love with this empress. They realized that this is the romance of a lifetime. That they want to make this right. They want to fix this. They want to <clears throat> possibly marry this person. Or at least be in some sort of contract with them. They don't want to let them go. They see the empress as a treasure. See how they're gripping it? Yeah, they don't want to let it go. They want... It feels a lot more like making it right and tempering. Because the temperance card is here. Like They're shocked. This is maybe somebody that's not used to apologizing. If they've done this type of thing before, they usually just have their fun and walk away. But with this empress, they just can't. They cannot. It's, it's like something is compelling them to fix things with her. To work on it. Clarify, give your relationship a chance. Queen of Swords. The Star. And Eight of Swords. Oh, wow. That's why. <sighs> because when the queen, <clears throat> when the empress went from the queen of cups, who was kind, soft, loving, to now being the queen of swords, they feel so, almost like they've never felt this devastated before. They want her to invest in them again. They probably spy on her. They see her prospering. And now they're sitting here worried that she's going to find someone that really gives her what she wants. And they feel left out. Lonely. But not, not because they don't have people around them, but because they don't have her around them. It's a different type of loneliness. when You, you can be around a lot of people and not be with the one you want. Now look at her face. Yeah. She doesn't want anything to do with them. I don't know what they did, but I'm telling you here... They did something cruel. <sighs> but she's healing. She's recuperating. She's nurturing herself. The nine of swords here. I feel like the one that's anxious is them. <clears throat> Not her. She's healing. She's letting go. And now they want to work on it. They're, they're so close. Almost like this is nine swords. They feel like one more sword and I'm done. She won't ever let me back in. So they're worried about how to come forward and express this to her. How to come forward and express how they feel. Because now they're realizing that the person that turns out to be their soulmate is very different from what they ever thought it would be. Clarify, keep an open mind. At the same time, they're afraid of insulting her if they say that. Judgment. Strength and Nine of Pentacles. The Nine of Cups. See, this is somebody who had made a decision to possibly be single the rest of their lives. They were either a bachelor, they were a player. Um, they might have thought that the only person that could ever convince them to get into a connection had to be some sort of angel some I don't know something that that was just ethereal and they're realizing that <laughs> they never thought the person that would be for them was going to be the biggest challenge of their life such a challenge that it would change them as a person they would never be the same person nothing now makes them happier than to think of facing all the challenges of life together with this queen. But they had to, th this has been a, a whole journey. This has been a whole transformative journey for this person. And I'm sure there's still more to go, but you'll know if you resonate with this person because they are actively working on healing themselves. They're not, they're not the same. For those of you who constantly deal with someone who is in addiction, is a cheater, is doing all these things, 
but they don't change. They'll tell you they will, but they don't. That's not your, this is not your story. Okay. So don't try to make it fit. This should be confirmation of something you already know. Now, if you appreciate my time and energy, please make sure to react with comments, uh, reactions to the video, share it if it's already public. And I appreciate your time and energy as well, guys. Thank you so much for being here. And I love y'all. Bye-bye.